The Berlin Wall. Once it divided east from west. Now on its way to becoming an artifact of history. This is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather reporting tonight from in front of the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, Germany. Good evening. These are the sights and sounds of the continuing celebration of Germans about the symbolic, not the literal, at least not yet, but the symbolic tearing down of the Berlin Wall. If you were here, the feeling that you would feel is a kind of combination Fourth of July and Thanksgiving Day. But it's impossible to completely describe how deeply Germans feel about what's happened here. Now, East German border guards tonight were literally tearing down portions of the wall itself. Not the whole wall, but portions of the wall to make it easier for East Germans to come into West Berlin. And as the joyous hordes of Berliners were still streaming through the wall, the East German Communist government said they can come and go permanently. They can come into West Berlin, have a look, and then come back home again with no special documents required. West German Chancellor Kohl flew to Berlin to talk to the aesthetic crowds. Kohl urged East Germans to stay home, perhaps come over and have a look, but then go back home to rebuild their own country in East Germany. But Kohl also held out the promise of eventual German reunification, of eventually Germany again becoming one. At the same time, the firestorm of change hit yet another hardline communist state. The party leader in Bulgaria, Tudor Zhikov, suddenly resigned after 35 years of Bulgarian power. But the eyes of the world, with every reason, are riveted here tonight at the wall. Until yesterday, the wall was a symbol of Cold War fear and loathing. Tonight, it's the scene for a celebration of freedom, peace, and love. All day long at the Berlin Wall, a carnival atmosphere. Drums and champagne. Toast to the end of an era. It's the most happy day for me in my life. In Berlin, this is definitely the end place to be. The sights and sounds, all the joy and the history in front of the Brandenburg Gate. With West Berliners partying literally on top of the Berlin Wall in front of the gate. I climbed up the Berlin Wall to get a better look at the East German side. West Berliners up on the wall itself, having their continuous one long rolling party. From time to time, one of them will jump down, either greet the East German border police or in some cases, taunt them. It's all been in good humor. Those up on the wall, the West Berliners in joyous mood, It's unbelievable. Do you think they'll take down the wall itself? No, they won't. Mm -hmm. it, will be, it will stay here as a tourist thing. A lot of history is being washed away with all of this. One of the extraordinary faces, one of the extraordinary people that made the history appeared right below the wall for a while today, just in front of the Brandenburg Gate. The former mayor of West Berlin, Willy Braun. What a day. Yes, what goes through your mind and heart? Well, of course, I look back to all those years of hardship for the families even more than for the country as a whole. And it's moving to see families getting together again. My feeling is that we are very close to an end of the artificial division of Berlin. And I also believe we are close to the point where the parts of uh, Germany will um, come much closer together. This, of course, only within a reasonable European framework. With nightfall, the big party turned into a full-scale festival, a celebration of freedom and of unity. And as the night has worn on and it's gotten colder, tempers are getting a little frayed and tensions are on the rise. Now, just across the wall, look at the blue lights. The East German border police have moved in water cannon, and they have repeatedly said over the loudspeaker to the West Germans celebrating on the wall, which the East Germans consider their territory. The East Germans saying to them, don't throw any more firecrackers our way. And the loudspeaker calls attention to the presence of the water cannon. 
so many things happening in and around here. Such a tumultuous, history-making day. CBS News correspondent Alan Pizzi has more of the latest. There was a feeling here that perhaps only people who had grown up with something monstrous and then seen it reduced to insignificance could understand. 30 years I was looking there, I couldn't go there. It was so far like the moon for us. And then the wall that had kept them from the west didn't seem to be there anymore. And the only obstacle it posed was the lines one had to wait in to cross it. West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl declared that the Germany the wall divided should be reunited. Tonight in a rally for what remained of his party's faithful, East German leader Egon Krenz used the opening as an incentive to go out and work hard. Even the now legal street opposition was impressed. Incredible, unbelievable. I, we have waited for 28 years for the opening of the frontier here in Berlin. And Almost everyone shared the sentiment. <laughs> to return to the old ways would be impossible now, one opposition leader said. This state will never be the same again. The day after the wall opened, it was a state near euphoria. But it didn't take East Berliners long to take advantage of their sudden good fortune. We are so happy. <laughs> Almost everyone seemed to be heading west. These three workmen said they were going to breakfast. Border guards with a well-deserved reputation for being cold and unhelpful handed out white cards. Instant visas for people who used to have to wait months, even years, to leave their country legally. This is only the stamp and now you can go around the world. That is our free sign. In many cases, the border guards just glanced at identity documents. But mistrust of the government is ingrained here, and not everyone expects it to stay so easy. Passport photo offices did a brisk business for those who want to be completely legal. All the people don't know uh, what to do uh, when this day is after. But they did know what to do with what came at the end of the day. As dusk fell, the line at Checkpoint Charlie was three wide and half a mile long, and haste was the order of the day. More border crossings are to be opened tomorrow. Some West Germans who couldn't wait that long tried to jump across at the Brandenburg Gate. In the old days, they might have been shot. Alan Pizzi, CBS News, East Berlin. You know, for many Berliners, this was literally the greatest day of their lives. Along with other CBS News correspondents, Eric Ingberg has been out with some of the people today. Eric? Dan, at countless border checkpoints today, this very big geopolitical story turned into a very human story. Crowds of West Berliners gathered spontaneously to welcome the parade of nearly identical small, drab, communist-built cars carrying smiling East Berliners. Many had not seen this half of the city for 28 years. How do you feel? How, what are your feelings about coming? Super. <laughs> a woman looked forward to seeing her mother for the first time in 18 years. For many, the first stop was the bank to pick up a cash gift from the West German government, about $50 officially, but worth far more than that on the East Berlin black market. Others, like the Will family, headed straight to renew friendships disrupted by the city's forced division. I'm happy. I am happy. Guess who's in town phone calls were the order of the day in West Berlin. Harold Will, an East Berlin restaurant manager, was just nine years old when the wall went up. He has not been in West Berlin since. He is now like a tourist here, navigating by map, bewildered by the subway. The Wills are going to see Iris Schultz, a friend they have not seen since she left East Berlin five years ago. East met West with hugs all across this city today. The Wills say they intend to continue living in East Berlin, Dan, and in fact they say that the opening of the border is one reason why they don't have to move now, because they'll be able to travel freely between the two cities. So in that sense, the new East German communist government gets what it wants. In one sense, but I think in the short range. Events of the past 24 hours have shown that uh, the emotions that have been set loose are very raw. You can see it at the checkpoints. You can see it here tonight. And I think the communist leaders of East Germany have to be wondering this evening at what stage they might be able to halt these events that have been set loose or whether they're controllable at all. Thanks, Eric. And still to come on tonight's CBS Evening News, the comparatively mild reaction inside the Soviet Union except for a warning from Moscow about the possible reunification of Germany. So stay here with us.
I just did something incredible. Five minutes ago, I had gray hair, but now I don't. And this is what did it. New Option Instant from Clairol. The advanced way to get rid of the gray. Option Instant for men is different. With theirs, you have to pour and mix ingredients, but Option's the advanced way. All you need is this. It's so easy. And only five minutes later, your natural looking color's back. Mm, the hair feels thicker, too. New Option Instant from Clairol. The advanced way to get rid of the gray. Right now at Sears, until November 19th, get 0% financing until February on all major purchases with Sears Charge. No payments, no billing, no finance charge until then. Get to Sears for great low prices and 0% financing now. This is new Hellman's Cholesterol Free. Will I like it? It has 0% cholesterol. Will I like it? It tastes 100% Hellman's. Hmm, I like it. I knew you'd like it. I knew I'd like it. New Hellman's Cholesterol Free with half the fat. Bring out the best. Special K. Who's the fat? The Soviet Union today praised East Germany for opening its borders, but Moscow cautioned West Germany against trying to move too far too fast on the question of reunification. Peter Van Sant has our report from Moscow. You'd think the end of the Iron Curtain would be the ultimate Soviet nightmare. But under Mikhail Gorbachev, the tanks will not roll. The Soviets say they approve of East Germany's open border. DDI is doing uh, something to stabilize the situation. They opened the border which is stabilizing the situation. Well, it's a historical moment, of course. We hope this for the best. The relaxed Soviet reaction reflects Gorbachev's tolerance of reform and his campaign to portray the Soviet Union as a member of the European community. Tonight, Foreign Minister Edward Shevardnadze said that opening the East German border was a right and wise decision. People ought to be able to decide whether they want a communist government or not. But while the Soviets say they won't stop the flood of refugees, they say they will block any move toward reunification at the border. DDR, German Democratic Republic, is our strategic ally. We have troops there. How can you talk realistically about reunification? More than 380,000 Soviet troops are in East Germany, considered vital to Soviet security. East Germany is a significant military power in its own right, uh, and obviously provides the major base for forward Soviet troops. The Soviets say realistic talks about German reunification could only be held after both NATO and the Warsaw Pact are dissolved and all foreign troops leave the two Germanys. But despite the softer talk and the crumbling of the Iron Curtain, the Soviets say there will be no reunification, that East Germany will not be allowed to follow its citizens into the West. Peter Van Sant, CBS News, Moscow. For his part, President Bush today kept up pretty much the don't rock the boat a lot position. The president did send out at least some tentative signals that the United States wants to go slow on the question of German reunification. All of this happened as President Bush was making a political trip to Texas. CBS News State Department correspondent Bill Plant has more about the hope and fear of a reunited Germany. Apparently stung by criticism of his initial cautious low-key reaction, President Bush today used a speech in Dallas to enthusiastically embrace the news from Berlin. I was moved, as you all were, by the pictures of Berliners from east and west standing atop the, the wall with chisels and hammers celebrating the opening of the most vivid symbol of the Iron Curtain. While admitting he didn't expect this to happen so quickly, Mr. Bush moved to take some of the credit. I called upon the Soviet Union to support self-determination for the nations of Eastern and Central Europe and to tear down the Iron Curtain. And now we're seeing it happen. But for all of today's presidential enthusiasm, U.S. policymakers are still cautious and uncertain when they look down the road at the logical conclusion of all this, reunification of the two Germanys that it may be a little bit premature uh, to take the jump from free travel 
in, uh, in East Germany, permitting free travel uh, by the citizens of East Germany to make the, uh, the big leap from there uh, to the subject of reunification. There's plenty of evidence that the NATO allies are no more eager to see the end of divided Europe. I think you're going much too fast, much too fast. You have to take these things step by step and handle them very wisely. The East Germans are even more emphatic. I don't see no possibility for a united Germany in the foreseeable future under present circumstances. But those who follow the situation say that a new political landscape, sooner rather than later, is simply inevitable. There are a lot of ways to do it, but I think the central fact is that German unification is now coming, and coming fairly soon. What we've seen today is that events are moving faster than we want. To think that we can stop and wait means that the train is going to pass us by. Almost no one predicted just how fast change would really come to East Germany, but at least one Western leader is absolutely certain who's really responsible. The fact is, none of this would have happened without the vision and the courage of Mr. Gorbachev. Mr. Bush received a telephone briefing today from West German Chancellor Kohl on the events in Germany. The White House says the two men agreed that the dramatic developments make the Bush-Gorbachev meeting next month suddenly more important. What was to have been a kind of put-your-feet-up summit with no agenda now suddenly looms as some kind of watershed. Bill Plant, CBS News, the State Department. The Kremlin served notice today that its hands-off attitude toward East Germany and other Eastern European countries does not apply to its own Soviet Republic. The news agency TASS said Soviet leaders have ordered the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania to drop a series of what are called radical new laws about economic and political freedom. The Kremlin says those laws violate the Soviet Constitution. I'll be back with more on this remarkable day in Berlin in a moment. If you think oat bran cereals are the way to go for overall nutrition, we're about to turn the tables on you. A leading consumer magazine just rated Nabisco shredded wheat ahead of all the leading oat bran cereals in nutritional value. That's how much fiber, protein, vitamins, and minerals per calorie we have, and how little sugar and fat. Gee, thanks. And that should turn your ideas about nutrition around to Nabisco shredded wheat. Recognize that skyline? There's only one place in the world looks like that. Manhattan. Where the air's clean, the living's easy, and the food's great. Every time I'm in Manhattan, I order my personal favorite, the New York Strip. Delicious. Manhattan's known for its famous restaurants, so be sure to try all three. Beef, real food, Manhattan, Montana. Butter starts like this, but can end up like this. So now there's all natural butter buds. It has the same flavor as this, with no cholesterol and virtually no fat. Delicious. New butter buds. It's better than butter. <laughs> when mom gets a cough and cold, everyone suffers. Mom, Dad's ironing! Time to doctor that cough with Robitussin. Look, mom's feeling better. Uh -oh. Robitussin, recommended by more doctors, pharmacists, and Dr. Mom. Another late and sizable indication that what the Soviet Union will allow in East Germany, that it will not allow in its own republics. Word comes in that the Soviet Republic of Moldavia has seen troops and police fighting with anti-government protesters. Protesters today demanding more freedom from Kremlin rule. The initial reports from Moldavia indicate dozens of persons injured, some seriously. Now, the whole changing face of communism here in Europe and elsewhere means all kinds of new adjustments, new realities, and new strategies for East-West defenses. CBS News Defense Department correspondent David Martin has been looking into how this latest reshaping of history may reshape the defense of Europe and U.S. defenses worldwide overall. The border between East and West Germany a no-man's land patrolled by American troops alert to any signs of movement on the other side. Now that it is an open border, must it still be guarded? 
That is only the first in an endless series of questions about the military impact of political events in Central Europe. Questions which have enormous consequences for the Pentagon, questions which the Secretary of Defense is only beginning to grapple with. Right now, my biggest commitment in terms of troops is the requirement to have 10 divisions in Europe within 10 days of a decision to mobilize. Now, if you take away that requirement, and we can, in fact, reduce uh, the amount of money we have to spend on those forces. For 40 years, the threat of Soviet tanks rolling across the plains of Europe has driven American strategy and spending. Roughly half the $300 billion Pentagon budget goes to the defense of Europe. Those days now seem numbered. It's becoming politically anachronistic to spend this much money and allocate this much manpower and talent and national treasure to this uh, enterprise when the prospect of premeditated aggression on either side is so low. There's still going to be armies in Europe on their side and ours, but at vastly reduced levels. Many things could still go wrong. The NATO alliance may have won the Cold War, but it could founder on peace. We always have had isolationist sentiment expressed in the United States. I hope it certainly will not prevail because not only is it wrong at any time, but it's particularly dangerous now because what's happening now is the result of American and NATO military strength and unity. Tomorrow in Norfolk, the supercarrier Lincoln will be commissioned, a $3 billion warship ordered at the start of the Reagan defense buildup to counter the Soviet threat. In the time it took to build this ship, the east-west confrontation has changed so drastically that what was once a juggernaut might well become an albatross. David Martin, CBS News, the Pentagon. I think that uh, the future is so fascinating and so interesting for me, I feel blessed. I'm far less pressured as I get older than when I was young. As far as having aches and pains, I'm no different than anyone else. Yes, I do have my share. And it's those times that I use Bufferin. Bufferin, my brand of aspirin, is different than plain aspirin. It has buffers that make it gentler to your stomach. Bufferin, so you can do the things you want to do. Right, to right, which right, this nation right, has right, always right, been committed. Extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Peace now, peace now, peace. America great. America great. America We're not going to try to control what our people read and say and think. You commit yourself to the principles of God. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Free at last. The freedom to say and think what we believe, to express our individuality and diversity. That's our birthright, and it's ensured by this document. Join us and the National Archives in celebrating the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights. In the United States, the tumultuous events here at the Berlin Wall occur on the eve of Veterans Day. They also, as Bruce Morton reminds us, are the latest chapter in the annals of a remarkable year. Veterans March today. They came home, many of them, from a war which left Europe divided by an iron curtain. Good guys in the West, bad guys in the East. Blood and iron ruled behind the curtain. Hungary rose in 1956 and fell to Soviet tanks. Czechoslovakia rose in 1968 and fell to Soviet tanks. In Berlin, the communists built a wall to lock their people in. But this year, just this short, astounding year, everything changed. Hungary, May. Imre Naj, who led that 1956 uprising, is acclaimed, reburied with honor. Poland, June, the once illegal Union Solidarity clobbers the communists in parliamentary elections. Poland, August, Solidarity names a prime minister, forms a government. Most of the members have done time in communist jails. I am free. <laughs> I am, yeah, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Hungary, September, troops dismantled the barbed wire on the Austrian border. East Germans pour through the gap to freedom. As the weeks pass, thousands mass in this Berlin church. Hundreds of thousands march in Leipzig. October 18th, Eric Honecker, the hard man, resigns. 
October 23rd, Hungary declares itself an independent republic. The Communist Party has changed its name. November 3rd, East Germany says its people can leave via Czechoslovakia. Thousands do. November 9th, the wall comes tumbling down. November 10th, Bulgaria's Turdzivkov, the longest reigning strongman, resigns. Generations of American kids ducked in fear of nuclear war, grew up knowing this two-sided world, us and them. That world is over now. The old Europe, the old world of red and west, has changed forever. These kids will face a different world. We have learned this week that freedom is like crabgrass, hard to kill. We have learned that a line of Robert Frost applies not just to his New England, but to Poland and Hungary and East Germany and all the world. Something, Frost wrote, something there is that does not love a wall. Bruce Morton, CBS News, New York. In front of the wall at this moment, West German police are beginning to circulate and to warn the West Germans who are celebrating on top of the wall that they, the West German police, can no longer guarantee that the East German police will not use those water cannon that the East German border guards moved up not long ago because some of the West Germans have been throwing sparklers and a few fireworks toward the East German border police. Well, everybody here would be surprised if there's real trouble as the night goes along, but the potential is here, and that's what the West German police are saying. Part of our world tonight. Tomorrow, I'll be reporting again from here in Berlin with Bob Schieffer in New York. For now, Dan Rather for the CBS Evening News. Good night. To my beautiful wife. It's nice to know he still loves the way you look. And if you wear dentures, you can count on Effordent to freshen up dentures and clean away stains so well. With Effordent, all you'll notice is you. Chili dog with onions. Indigestion time. 2.2. I'd never tried Ryapan. 2.2. And I remembered my doctor telling me about it. 2.2 seconds. It was incredible. Lab tests show Ryapan Plus 2 starts neutralizing acid on stomach contact in just 2.2 seconds. Because Ryapan has Megaldrate, a special dual action formula. Ryapan's a new friend of the family. Remember 2.2. Remember Ryapan. Kmart presents At Home with Martha Stewart. With the Presto Fry Daddy, I can make all kinds of great fried food without making any kind of mess. Make your house a home with a Presto Fry Daddy from Kmart. If you think the new Honda Accord Coupe looks good on television, you should see it on the road. The new Accord from Honda. You have to drive it to believe it. This is CBS.